So, you know, if if that's a health issue, then so is someone, you know, like, right. again. And, so, and, that, and that's the part that makes me against it, that uh, the war on drugs is um, it's really just all about money. It's because they yeah. it's because they can't tax it. You know what I mean? And how much how how much of the drugs in our country, starting from the beginning of the war on drugs, which is what late seventies, early eighties, it kind of built Reagan, I think it was, uh, that the, yeah. that it started. Yeah, I okay. think so. So if that's the case, then you know how many how much, just we'll just say tonnage of drugs, quote unquote drugs, all the drugs, cocaine, cocaine, uh, meth, heroin. Uh, marijuana, you know, we'll throw marijuana in there because still it's considered a drug, and I would consider it a drug as well, even though I'm mind altering substance happens maybe. to be the one that I prefer, and actually I see more as a medicine. But medicine is still drugs, right? Right. Yeah. So we'll even throw in big pharma. Oh, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> the, they're, they're the worst offenders of all. <laughs> you know, may cause death. Ask your doctor if death is right. 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 Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, like Percocets and stuff. My my neighbor, you know, he uh, I'll leave him nameless. Out of respect for him, but um, got got into the perks, and that is illegal. Yeah. And totally, I mean, it totally changed him. Totally mm-hmm. changed. He wasn't the same person, literally. And you know, so they are horrible, absolutely. Uh, but the whole, you know, the whole, all the money wasted on the war on drugs, and oh, you know, we're gonna get you and, and throwing them away. It's just a waste. Well, and, and like you said again, it was a money making scheme, a power, a power hoarding and money hoarding scheme. Uh, which I agree with, and I think many people would, that um, resulted in them bringing in more drugs. Right, they yeah. were literally, they've been found on record multiple times, flying in pound, kilos of cocaine, you know, or Absolutely, kilos yeah. of marijuana from Mexico. I mean, everyone, it's it's almost like, uh, just like, oh, the government's been, you know, fueling us. Well, I mean, look at, look at what happened with Prohibition. Well, yeah, no, I mean, that, well, and they, they didn't learn. They didn't learn. I mean, that's was, so that's what I'm, I mean, they, they made alcohol illegal, and then you have people like Al Capone, who I heard made today's equivalent of like ten thousand dollars a day. A day. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Now, if they just made it legal, right? They, he would make no money, right? And that money could be put in through taxes into the back into the city. Exactly. Right? You know, I mean, you know, do I think that there should be meth shops right next no, to the liquor no, store? Not no, but but there could be compassion centers. Where now they exist for marijuana, but perhaps in the future, a compassion yeah, center uh, does have every drug which is pure, safe, that's true, tested, and even a space to do the drugs. You, right. You absolutely. So I mean, you know, I, I, we're all victims of of what is what is and what isn't socially acceptable. There was a time, you know, during prohibition where. These women genuinely, gen, uh, genuinely, excuse me, felt disturbed by alcohol. They thought it was a horrible thing, and that nobody should be drinking it. Um, so you know, it it is all about what's socially acceptable. I mean, look at cigarettes and how long it was totally yeah. okay to fill up an entire building with children running around and or smoke in the car, right? The car ride with your kid in the back seat. Yeah, you know, two parents in the front. My, that was my parents. Jimmy away. Yeah, the maybe windows too. Were, my... Windows were cracked, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I was yeah, I was like actively not breathing, breathing in my sleeve. Yeah, you know, my, trying to filter it out to do the nose thing. Yeah, my yeah. my grandparents' house uh, at the no smokes now, but at the time, uh, my father. Have you, Huh? Except you. Yeah. What does that say? Me too. Yeah, right. I hated them for it. I yeah. asked them decades, stop smoking, stop smoking. I do, smoking. yeah, I do smoke, yeah. And now I must say that's okay. It's the young. But yeah, my, my Nana, my grandfather, my aunt, my dad, all would like, like, they, you know, light up one at the same time and you walk in the house and like your, you know, your eyes sting and your, your school, your school clothing just reeks. Skin is instantly oily. <laughs> like, Fuck, man. You wake up with a runny, it's, it's this girl, um. My friend Dan, you met him once. His uh, fiance Annie, she's a um, she's like a preschool teacher, and she says you always something she learned from the other teachers. She said you always know the kids whose parents smoke indoors because their nose leaks. Really? Like even like during a time when nobody has a cold. Right, right, right. right and now right. looking back on it, my nose was always running because I was in a, from ten to fifteen. I was in a household where people smoked indoors. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now, and now, how about the stat going back to how that's the socially acceptable? How about the stat that says that uh, alcohol and cigarettes, or maybe even just cigarettes at this point? I don't know. You know, I haven't read the recent, most recent stats, but I'm actually uh, quoting Bill Hicks right now in one of his uh, couple of his stand-up routines. He brings up the fact that alcohol and cigarettes are responsible for more deaths mm-hmm. on the books, more deaths than crack, heroin, meth, whatever, you know, coke combined. Absolutely, yeah. Alcohol, uh, no, alcohol and cigarettes. Yeah, yeah so, it's got to be both. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, alcoholism is a very serious, horrible thing. Um, cigarettes, obviously, I don't think I've ever produced that, like, a really fucked up personality type alone. 
Um, but obviously the given is lung cancer and you know, heart disease right. yes, yes, that yes, come yes. with it. Um, but cigarette, cigarettes, well, no, I, I, uh, I wanted to say that, but I guess it's not really. I, I almost said cigarettes are on their way out. But well, it, I mean, now it's to the point where like you're treated like, I mean, you know, as a smoker, you're treated like a leper. You are, you, you're sort of, you're sort of, uh, brush, brush off. Yeah, 500. Oh, you smoke, Ooh, you know. And, uh, interestingly enough, just a little fun fact, uh, for anybody who cares. Um, the first people or country to start a anti tobacco campaign was the Nazis. Really? Isn't that weird? That is kind of strange. And, um, laws against animal abuse. <laughs> Hitler started both of those. Really? Kill the Jews. Yeah, no, no, don't no. hurt that cat. <laughs> throw, throw hundreds in the oven, please. But, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting because most sociopaths actually don't mind harming animals. No, yeah. He, but he wasn't, I mean, that's the thing. Maybe he wasn't as sociopathic as we all think. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I maybe mean, he was psychopathic. There's all different. Yeah, he was, just, he was crazy. He was definitely a, he a shade of crazy. Yeah, definitely. Certain shade of gray, for sure. Mm -hmm. All 50 of them. <laughs> right, yeah. But I just I, I saw that and they're like they had a little like it was like it, it was like in German, but the translation it said like how cigarettes like oh you think you're you're eating the cigarette, but the cigarette eats you up or so, something weird like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, a lot of you know a lot of people like to. Uh, I mean, that's just part of the human story, though, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people will look at a con and just say that he's a bad guy or he's he's obviously abusing his power. I mean, you look at a black guy and you see that he's – you say that he's obviously a, a criminal element. Right, he's yeah. obviously His life doesn't matter or it means less than yours, so you have no problem taking their life. I mean, that's a standpoint that some people take on that. You know, I mean, that's not necessarily what's going through the person's mind. Obviously. Right, right. Um, perhaps it is. I don't know. But, you know – it's part of the human story, uh, and it's also part of our human story to have that that weird temporal amnesia. You know, it's like it's like when we look at things like very very long term, like I think eons, like evolution, we have no problem seeing that happen. You know, we can see that when uh, something happened, you know, like um, a week ago, you know, we can remember that. But it's those it's the things that happen in spans of like single generations, thirty, forty years, maybe two generations. It's those events that sort of just like mark those decades right, right. that we seem to have this this flash memory where it just disappears after we've had the the, the occurrence. And it, you know it's kind of like Ferguson and how that shit blew up after Mike Brown, and now we've got Baltimore, right. another you know whatever not unarmed necessarily, but another black man. Um, innocent until proven guilty, which is a cornerstone of our system. So he was an innocent black man because cops do not have the power to declare guilt or innocence. They That's don't. True. I mean, I, I guess maybe if a cop or, you know, uh, uh, you know, partners see <coughs> an actual crime happening, like a robbery in progress, perhaps they are allowed to say we have a guilty per party here that we're – but in general, I think – I don't even think that's the case. I think they have to be innocent until proven guilty. That's true, yeah. I would agree. I mean, at the end of the day, I think we both agree that, you know, just be a good person. Yes. You know, don't yeah. don't invade the rights of anybody else. Um, don't abuse your power. Uh, don't abuse your freedom, yeah. you know, and uh, – which I guess is power in a sense. Right. Um, well, you can't. But, I mean, that you know, that that's – that's how I feel about it at the end of the day. I don't, you know, and I think that goes with, I mean, I would hope most people kind of feel that way. You know what I mean? As far as just the general, don't invade anybody else's rights. Don't right. hurt anybody. Be a good person. Well, there's so much talk about extreme left, extreme right. But, you know, how, what about just the moderate middle? I mean, like, I guess that is a faction that is talked about. But, like, what about the people who just get both sides right, yeah. and accept the fact that this is, okay, both sides exist. This is reality. Let's move from there. Not talking about what should be on this end, what could have been from this end, but what is. And then how do we move forward from that? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's – that's – but, again, going back to the duality of humankind, I mean, it's like, you know, you can be a good cop <coughs> and you can do some shitty things. You can be a good person and you can do some shitty things. You can be a, a bad thug, a gangster, a blood, and shot innocent people in crossfire or, you know, just targeted people and whatever, did your nefarious actions, but still – perhaps be capable of good things. Right, yeah. You know? And still have love and compassion and family members that you care about and community members that you want to help. I mean, even though that you're even though you're willing to go out and cap a guy because you're your upper, your management or whatever in your gang structure, <laughs> whatever your GM says, you know, I need this guy capped, you have no problem doing that. Right, right. You know, but you're desensitized to it, A, because you grew up in that system, and B, uh, you're a foot soldier, and that's a soldier's job is to listen to, in, to uh, orders and to follow through. True. A good soldier doesn't question his orders necessarily. He does what he assumes that the order was 
the correct thing. Right. And, he, and that's a good soldier. So, and that's how you stick around in these organizations. You don't fuck off because otherwise they take you, you know, they say, you know, kill you, I guess, if you're in a gang. But anyway, um, Hitler is just another example of that. You know, I mean, you can be a good person or, or at least um, under the impression that you are doing good. Like, you know, I, I have a hard time, I said this to you before, I have a hard time believing that Hitler ever woke up you know, or, you know, woke up every morning and said, I'm going to do evil today. Right. You know, yeah, I yeah. can't wait to cause pain and suffering. No, he was trying. He was actually saying, I know, I can't wait to make my yeah. country better. Well, he, he, was, he was so much about the country and making the country better. That was his thing. I'm going to save Germany. Um, but, you know, obviously there are bad or poor personality traits that went along with his decisions, you know, Absolutely. which I think is the same for anybody involved in in what we would call organized crime, back to the mafia. You know, you, you people like the mafia because they go to church and they're sitting around with the family and right, you know, right, hey, right. where's the gabagool? You know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And yeah. they're very human, but at the end of the day, they're stealing from people and they're killing people, which overall makes them a bad person, in my opinion. Squeezing because, shop owners out of all their money for protection. Yeah, right. You know, that's uh, you're protecting me from you. <laughs> what are you doing? Just don't hurt me. You just get, can I? I need that money so I don't punch you in the face. Yeah, because yeah, I, you know. So I mean, um, if 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 that's the kind of reputation you're going to build for yourself, then then it, then it is fair that you are treated a little bit differently. Yeah. You know, uh, you know what I mean. If you uh, if you see somebody walking down the street of your house one day, looking out the window, and they smash somebody's car window, whatever, this random example, mm-hmm. and then the next day you see that same person, it isn't wrong to judge them and be like. Oh, or shit. shit. <laughs> I, you know, they, they might do something again. I'm mm-hmm. going to call the police. That right. isn't, that isn't wrong. That's, right. You know right. what I mean? You have every indication that that's that, the type of person. But that have. doesn't mean that that person maybe didn't just have dinner, a very nice lunch with his grandmother before mm-hmm. he did that. Right, right. Brought her the groceries and helped her pack it in. Right. You know, he might just have a really bad temper or he might be very manipulative and do everything for the wrong reasons and right. be able to put on that fake charm and smile, kind of like Ted Bundy did. Everybody yep. described him as very intelligent and, yep. and charming. Personable. And, yeah, and then he fucking, you know, whatever, killed 100 women or whatever number he said. Um, yeah. But, yeah, man, just, like, just be a good person. It's really not that hard. Not that hard. But, no, so don't you feel that this might um, bring bring up the idea where, okay, so, you know, there's an individual, and we're going to continue with the Hitler uh, example because he, he's a very clearly defined individual in our history, so we all know what's going on there. Um, you know, so we have this individual who um, is – is on the road of good intentions, you know, is on the road to good intentions, but is, um, is doing terrible things. Right. Doesn't that give us some clue about limiting an individual's power? Never letting them get to that point yeah. where they can have this kind of sway. Yeah, definitely. And so then we can extrapolate that down to a lesser level into the police force and say, look, you have a job. We totally get that. And with that job, there comes an inherent level of power. Something that, you know, if, if an individual, he's still an individual, but if he's co- committing a, a heinous crime, you would literally have to take his rights away. Now, he's an individual, and I believe that every individual has their rights, but if you're going to impede on someone else's health or safety or personal property, then you're taking away their rights. So, therefore, you're, you're, you're basically negating your contract right. with society. Yeah. You know, society doesn't want pointy, sharp people. They want nice people who, who get along and understand each other. I think... And maybe that's painting a stupid picture, and I'm being no, no, talking I, naive, but I, you know, know, I agree. I think in I think in general, people do want a peaceful existence with one another, and it is absolutely possible. Or either that, or either that, or an uninvolved existence. Right. I feel like most people, you know, you drive by people that don't look at you. At least, I get you now living in Massachusetts, it's a little gen, generally people are a little more unfriendly. I suppose you know what stand, I mean. They can be standoffish. Yeah, you know, but I mean that—that's just we're all just products of our of our environment, or at least to a certain degree. I mean, at the end of the day, I'll always defend that everything boils down to the individual. Right. However, um, even living when I lived in Arizona, uh, the people were overall very different. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, or if you go to a, you know a southern state, most likely people are going to be a little more involved in the community, a little more. Um, you know, willing to stop and have a conversation with a stranger, where whereas yeah. in this area it's a little strange if somebody says anything more than even hello. Or can I buy a cigarette? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't allow that, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> um. Um. But you know, but so no, yeah. People are different, you know, and, and every little every little group is going to have its own sort of uh, personality, I guess. But and and so it's so it's hard to police in an umbrella way. 
it's hard to, in an all-encompassing sort of, this is the way the police are going to act right, yeah. countrywide. Because you have no idea who you, I mean. No, every, yeah. everyone's different. They have different social protocols. Just like, for example, in different countries, prolonged eye contact is seen as an as a absolute insult. Yeah, and or showing your feet in some countries. Or showing the bottom, the bottom, of, your bottom feet, of your feet. Yeah. Right, your shoes, whatever. So, you know, in <coughs> other places, no big deal. You you know, you put your leg up on your other leg, and I see the bottom of your shoe. I'm not offended by that. Right, so right. We make eye contact in this country, and that means that we're respectful. We're actually paying attention. We're engaged. You know, so every place is going to be different. You can't do a blanket sort of policy, and I understand that. Um, but I can suggest, at the very least, that we start to make it absolutely mandatory that they have hard, concrete proof that the house that they're going to is, A, the right house. The person that they're looking for is there. And uh, the things that he do did warrant having, uh, you know, a battering ram and perhaps shooting his dog. Like, right. if, you know, I don't agree with shooting a dog in general, but I suppose if this man is nefarious and perhaps he has a fighting dog for, a, for protection, you know, this does happen. People buy dogs and literally train them to kill and hurt right. because they're using it for – it's like having a loaded gun for them. It's like having a gun is self-protection. But those can be used just like a loaded gun against, you know, an officer. And of right, course, yeah. He needs to get home safe to his family. I don't disagree with that. But let's let's rewrite the policy. Let's let's dial down that power for the individual, you know, officer or or unit or department. Let's dial down that power so they can't just bust down your door. Even though I know surprise is a good element, and they want to make sure that they get you. I, I get all of those things. But back in the day, you literally had to wait for a judge's approval. He had to look over the situation, give you a warrant that gave you that right or that privilege to do this action. Now. There are no-knock warrants, or warrantless no-knock raids, where they don't even knock. They literally just show up with a group out of a truck, down your street, and then ram your door open. Now, whether the person, if the person who was doing nefarious actions was a, is a bad person and this, and this action was absolutely warranted, and he fights back, obviously, you know, you should take uh, whatever is necessary, because chances are he's a bad guy. Chances are he wants to not get caught, although... If, if, if there's a SWAT team at your door and you try to fight back, you're absolutely stupid because clearly they have you pegged. Right. <laughs> they know where you are, buddy. You're not getting out. And now right. you're not getting out alive. You know, and I have no problem with that because you brought it to that level, like you said, and you deserve this sort of thing. But, you know, that was based on, you know, hours and hours of surveillance, right, right. making sure that they have the right location. And I can't tell you how many times I've read, maybe three or four at least, and perhaps more, of a situation or an article or multiple articles talking about, um, of SWAT team, SWAT raid teams going to the wrong address. Go, not only going to the wrong address, but <laughs> finding absolutely nothing and still beating, yeah. pepper spraying, tasing, shooting the dog of. Right, yeah. Dogs. And and if that, and like I, you know, I said about, I don't remember what example it was, but earlier, if that is true, then they should be dealt with yep. and the family should be, um, what's the term? Uh, compensated for Compen it. Okay, right, you know what right, I mean? Right. Um, yeah. I, I totally agree with that, you know? Yep. Um, but if it is a criminal's house that they're going into mm -hmm. and it is clear, do what you got to do. No, I no, mean, especially I, I, if it's I, like I, an extreme, you know, I mean, I don't even want to touch upon terrorist stuff because well, only because it's so overdone in the war on terror. And yeah, like, yeah, it's the same, you know, it's the and same it thing. Is, it is a scary thing and it is real. Obviously, we've witnessed it in our lives. Um, um, but, but I, I do agree, you know, if, if you get that evidence, go in, don't waste your time, shoot the dog, you know what I mean? And, and, I, and, and it is, it is horrible, but you know, you at least give the human that chance, like, okay, back down, right. you know, they, they're going to understand you. Whereas a dog spent like, you know, they're, they're freaking out, you know what well, I mean? And again, here's the thing. Okay. So if you, if you have the evidence and it's actually <coughs> where you can get an entire team out to that location, if you, if it's at all possible, surround all the exits. So you know that no one's coming or going. And then you, you say, we do have a warrant, flash it out like they have, used to have to do, they used to have to hold it out so that you could see it through your window or whatever. It was visible that they had a piece of paper, and, you know, it was hopefully the warrant, not just like a, you know, Dunkin' Donuts receipt. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, got a warrant! A Dunkin' Donuts receipt. <laughs> whatever, not to be, not to be. <laughs> no, no, it's funny. Um, but, you know, so they, they had to show that. And then they would also declare, if there's an animal in the house that can do us harm, if you have a dog in the house, put him away. Yeah. Lock the dog away that, you know, we need all the human individuals to be where we can see them. Right. But put the dog in another room where he can't get but what if the But what if who they're raiding um, is a guy who, you know, is, is, is sitting in his house and then he sees this SWAT team officer come up and hold up this warrant and then he goes and grabs a shotgun. 
and and waits behind the door. Right. You're totally eliminating the whole point of a raid of having that shock and surprise catching these criminals in the act, and you're taking that away. You're saying, here we come. But see, that's what they used to have to do. And I don't think the idea of a raid... Really? Yeah, no, and I don't think that a raid... The idea of a raid is to cause shock and awe. That is a very militaristic and a very warlike uh, action. To just bust down, throw flash grenades into your living room. I mean, these are things supposed to be done in, like, city area, yeah, like yeah, squares yeah, and yeah. stuff, okay? These are high explosives. They can start fires. There was a one example, which I don't necessarily want to bring up, of that little of the little kid in the crib. Where this SWAT team busted through the yeah, door, through, yeah. through the, the tear gas, and that, whatever, that is, yeah, that and is burned the shit out of his face. Um, um, dial down their ability to do that. Don't yeah. give them that much carte blanche, or if that's the right term, I'm not sure, but don't give them that much ability right. to walk in there and literally trash the rest of your life based on potentially unactionable. But evidence. what did you do to get them to do that? That's well, that's the question, know. because now you can do an anonymous tip. Does an anonymous tip even have to come from someone? You, of <laughs> yeah, course yeah. you want to say yes. Of course you yeah. want to say that Mrs. Jones from three blocks down called and said, the people in the red house are drug dealers. It's a drug den. They're, they're selling through here. My kids walked a whole, you know. But in reality, an anonymous tip is nothing. Right. No, I agree. I definitely – and I, I guess, you know, I just – I don't think that it happens a lot. I mean, A, I haven't been drug out of my house yet, and I'm right. pretty sure you haven't either. Nope. And I, no one I, I don't, no one I personally know has. Right. And I, I don't know of anybody, you know, and I'm not saying, oh, okay, let's wait till it gets to that level because, right. you know, I, I know that there have been incidents is where, um, you know, people have been, people have, have been greatly inconvenienced, harmed or killed. Yeah. And that is a bad thing. Absolutely. I've never taken that away. But if you're dealing with a really serious criminal, especially, you know, and I mean, this is like, an unarguable example, but, you know, you have like somebody like, uh, oh, crap, what was his name? John Dillinger, mm -hmm. uh, back, you know, most notorious bank robber who just was just shooting police and mm -hmm. shooting everybody. Right. I mean, you're really going to be like, all right, here we come. You know, well, you're no, going to no, do that for him. Right, no, no. I mean, no. I mean like, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, so the, the shock and awe argument is, I think, just based on, because that's more of like, that's like a, that's psychological warfare. I mean, well, I'm, when I, well, I said surprise. Well, right. Okay. Well, I, no, I, I just understand. mean I just mean not giving them a the time to hide their shit that you're trying to arrest them for. But if you've got their property, lo I mean, like, okay, so what, if they flush if they flush it down the toilet, say cocaine or something like that, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, the drug, yeah. they're going to be able because that's what these SWAT teams are used for. This is the war on drugs. And right. I don't want to get into the war on drugs because I'm just talking about police action, right, right, yeah, and their ability to do these things. But this is all based on drug offenses. This is like saying, oh, hey, Steve down the road got yeah. weed. That's the problem. That is the and problem. And he's just sitting it. there with his family. And maybe on Sundays he does get high in his garage. But, dude. I know. No, you're you right. Know? You're right. Or, if, if, or it's, if it's just for drugs, I, I, I definitely don't think there's any point. Let's get away from the war on drugs and let's just talk about the ability for the police to do this because that's where we were. Right. Um, I feel like, you know, I understand the, the element of surprise. And that gives you the upper hand. And in this situation, in this world where there are there, their job is to stop the people who are bad. So they're already geared up to be against bad thinking, acting people. Um, when you have, to, when you're in there, you know, obviously you have to do what you're gonna do. But um, fuck. Um, uh, I don't know. I just like. No, I. Like, I, I, I understand. I understand the need for what, why they do what they do right, because right. they are in that element, and they literally are putting themselves in that element on purpose. Which is another sort of argument because, okay, you did sign up for this. So. Yeah. Well, which comes with, I mean, yeah. you're, yeah, I mean, you're, 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 you still have to be equipped for that. Right. No, absolutely. I mean, they look like, they look like soldiers, whatever. I mean, again, how often do you see that go down in the street every day? How well, many, in our community, not so much. How many people do you know that can say, like, oh, I saw, like, five raids last week. It's getting bad. You know what that, I mean? Well, that's true, but there are people in Boston, which is only 30 minutes, 40 minutes away from us, who are at the Occupy at the Occupy Boston movement, and I guarantee you they saw units in, in riot gear. Yeah, yeah, and this, is, yeah. and this is just people protesting Wall Street. Like, we weren't even protesting dead black people. We weren't protesting lives, things that, like, are, like, really heavy. We're just talking about money, and, of course, right. that is heavy, but money is also just a distraction. But <coughs> so they were occupying Boston, and, you know, that's all well and good, but they were dispatching riot gear units with shields and batons and helmets, and they were also pepper spraying people liberally. Well, As if it were like you know Pam. Just I can't believe it's not. <laughs> I can't believe it's not pepper spray. <laughs> Pam. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, and, and again, that is unfortunate. But I mean, you got to be prepared. You know, you can't. 
You can't, that isn't the kind of job where you can take the time to calculate like, oh, yeah, they don't look like they're going to do anything, so let's just go on our regular but police clothes. But shouldn't clothes. that be part of it? it? It is possible. You can't. You, do you concede that it is possible to be that sort of clear-headed thinker in the moment? It, you can assess the situation and... It is, but Ted Bundy just popped in my head again. You, know? <laughs> you got a problem. <laughs> uh, he popped in my head because, you know, do you think that that woman sitting across from that very charming man, don't you think her guard was put down? Do you think she was prepared for him to fucking chop her head off or whatever he did? No. no, because he was in a suit, because he had a nice smile, because he looked presentable. Now, I don't know anything about that Boston thing, and maybe the people didn't do anything, but you never know what somebody's going to do, whether they look like a criminal or not. Right. And you, you know, you're, you're on your way to the call, and they're like, all right, these guys don't look that dangerous, so don't wear eye protection, don't wear a helmet, don't bring your rifle. Like, no, like, you're going to be prepared, because people can snap out of nowhere, and they might have some plan. People have done some crazy shit, especially with numbers. And that's my, you know, argument is that the presence of them being, you know, in that gear, I understand that it's very, you know, again, back to not that Nazi, you know. Um, SS in the streets. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like it, in Watertown, Massachusetts, after the, uh, the marathon bombing, and they had those armored personnel carriers going right through the streets of Watertown, and they were knocking on doors and calling people out. Right. And, and that, saying, you have no choice, yeah. otherwise we're coming in. And that, that's scary. I mean, that is absolutely a scary thing. But in that position, they're not going to take any chances. And I think that, you know, it is hard to put yourself in their shoes because you're like, come on, like, look at this guy's just like reading a book or whatever. But like, like, look at the Unabomber, like people, people of that intelligence. Yep. You just, well, it's very, yeah, it's very you common. never know. You never know what people are going to do. And I mean, I guess that, that, that's my argument. And should people who are just standing there peacefully get pepper sprayed? No. Um, should they get pepper sprayed if they were told to move several times and didn't? Well, if you just listen, nothing's going to happen to you. You're not going to well, get beat up if you just listen but to the police. As far as the law is concerned, pepper spray is considered assault and battery. And if the person doesn't assault you first, then, then aren't you in the wrong, correct? Well, assault means you feel threatened, not physical Assault contact. and battery. I said assault and battery. Yeah, so battery. you feel threatened because you're brandishing, and then you actually get battered with the pepper spray. Oh, well, it's like spitting in a cop's face is considered battery. Battery. Yeah, and battery, then, then yeah. that's when they can engage. Right, You know, right. if you touch them or resist, now it's any kind of resistance yeah. whatsoever, which I just feel is, is completely unrealistic. Any animal is going to fight back. And if they feel cornered and you put hands on them, like Eric Garner, who didn't put hands on, I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't believe he put hands on anybody, but the cop reached for him, he resisted that reach, he resisted the grasp, and that was enough to get units on his yeah, back. Yeah, but see, I get it. I mean, if you, ju if you just put your hands behind your back, nothing else is going to happen to you. That's not true, because how many people hold a, keep their gun in the back, in the back of their waistband, people on the street? You put your hands behind your no, back. No, I mean, like, when they're behind you, they have, they're, you know, they have contact of you at this point. They're oh. telling you to put your hands... No, no, I'm not saying... When they're not oh, anywhere yeah. near oh, you. Okay. Okay. So no, saying, no, no, no. I'm saying like they have a hold of you. Right. Like just listen. Don't pull away. Don't resist. That's it's, the problem. It's hard. It's hard because again they're in the moment, and also because as a large black man, he was already ready to to defend himself against what he felt to be an unjust whatever. Right. Right. System. And I mean, so that was his reaction is just to like no fuck you get your hands <coughs> off. I haven't done anything that warrants you to be up in my shit right now. I'm not doing any illegal. See, I, I just, I, I don't, yeah, I mean, I just don't, I, I, people always, you see that on so many posts, it's always for no reason, for no reason, for uh, again, no, like, come on. It is out of context, I, so who knows? You but, know, and I'm not saying it's impossible, yeah. you know, you and I both have that, we both think anything's possible, especially any scenario is absolutely possible, but I mean, police, you know, I've, I don't have that much experience, I'm 23 years old, but I mean, police are not just driving down the street, pulling over and running up to somebody and beating them up because they kind of looked like they were up to, they're going to ask you for their ID, your ID. They're going to, they're going to go through their whole training thing of, you know, hi, how are you doing today? The reason I stopped you. And the moment you start resisting, now they're afraid. Now there's, their senses have gone up. Yeah. Now it's like, all right, this guy could, and I'm sure they, they've all been exposed. I know I was, when I was in the, the Citizens Academy, we were exposed to videos of cops walking up. Hi, how are you today? Bang, a shot right in the face. Yeah. These guys have seen these videos. Yep. They they know the risks of being a police officer. They know that the probability of getting shot goes way through the roof, especially if you're in a city like New York or Boston or Baltimore, yep. a big city with a lot of a, a bigger concentration of of people, you know, who might may or may not be violent or carrying illegal firearms or just more people in general. Right. Because yeah. that opens it up to good, bad, whatever. Absolutely. You know. So I mean, uh, just 
just do what they ask and you'll be on your way. It's really not that hard, you know. And of course there are incidents where I would something something snaps on them and they just start beating the shit out of somebody or whatever. Right. But the whole for no reason thing, I just don't buy it. No, no, and I agree. And I always and I always take the for no reason with a grain of salt again because you normally it's all cell phone fo- cell phone footage. We don't know the entire argument. We didn't see the full engagement, you know. We just saw how it ended, and because it ended very badly. Right, right. And that's all just negative press. But again, that's what made it to the news because that's what the press wants. Us that's to say. true, right? And I don't think that is the case. I think most cases the op- I think in most cases the majority of interactions with the police force is people just not resisting and and complying. You know, I mean, I will say I'll bring this up, uh, bring this back to this. Um, there is there is nothing that says that we have to show ID. A cop cannot re- request your ID, and if you don't show it to him, assume you're a criminal. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like know. the SS saying petals. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have your petals? <laughs> that's is good. That's is good. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I mean, so they actually can't. You know, there's no. Um, so what's the penalty then? Well, so okay, if you're getting pulled over in the car and the cop is pulling you over for a legitimate reason, like say, uh, a not visible license plate or lights are out or you were literally speeding or you hit a pedestrian, whatever. Um, I, I believe at that point. When he asks for your license, because that's your license to operate the vehicle, and and honestly, there's some gray area. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I would have, I, I'd like to look into that because I'm pretty sure that they they do have the right to make contact and find out. They can ask you who your you name. Are. They can ask you your name, but you know, first of all, you don't have to talk to them whatsoever. You can literally just be quiet. Yeah. I mean, they're going to see that as a aggra- they're going to see that as a passive aggressive move, and they're not going to like you very much, and they're going right. to hassle you. And that's what I'm saying. Like, why bother doing that? Why well, not? Because just- well, because here's the thing. There's going to be a guy. And he's going to be a certain type of thinker who says, fuck the police. I have, I'm a human male, white male, whatever his, his, his angle is, and I can do X, Y, and Z because I'm not infringing on X, Y, and Z. Okay, that's fine. So then the cop sees him walking through the park, and maybe he looks a little shifty, and the cop is just doing his fucking job, man. He just woke up this morning, kissed his kids in the forehead, sent him to school, and now here he is doing the park beat, okay? And it's a nice, quiet park, but he sees this guy, he looks a little shifty, goes up to him and says, sir, um, I just see you kind of walking around and... You know, just want to see it, make sure everything's okay. You want to see that, you know, make, you know, and then get into a conversation. Maybe he realizes during this initial conversation, this guy doesn't really seem to trust cops or seems to have another air about him that he doesn't trust himself. Right. So he says, sir, can I see your ID? That he doesn't have to show it to him and he's not breaking any laws. Now, the cop is going to see that again as a passive aggressive move and he's not going to appreciate that. And they're trained to almost, I don't want to say they're trained to see, but they're going to see that someone is, a, is resistance. Because they're the authority, and they're coming to get information, and you are resisting giving them that information. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to look into that, because I've never heard... Maybe it's state by state, maybe it's different, I don't know. Well, yeah, states... Which I'm sure it is. States are definitely different. Not only that, but... Uh, and I've, I've talked to a lot of police, because, as I mentioned before, and as you know, I, it is it is the job I ultimately want. Uh, but anyway, and all of them go back to every department's different. Yep. Every single one of them, at some point in the conversation, says... You know, I'm like, oh, like, you know, does this help you get hired? Every department's different. Every department's different. Every single time they say that. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's always always what they say every single time. So uh, I would be interested to find that out because I I feel like, well, yeah, I get, yeah you, you have the right to remain silent. So, I mean, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, like, why bother? You know what I mean? Like, well, well it's, because, it's because it's certain individuals feel like it's not their goddamn business. They weren't breaking the law. He just happened to look shit. But wouldn't you rather just prove to him that you weren't? Like, here, here's my ID. Look, you know, they look up the name and they say, oh, he's got no papers, a.k.a. no warrants, none of that. And then you're on your way. Maybe, and then he realizes maybe he misjudged, but instead you're going to say no right. and give him further reason to be suspicious. Perhaps the majority of people would have no problem doing that, but there is going to be the certain individuals. Right, and I mean, you know, and, and I know, I get it. They let their pride kind of overrun them and, you know, oh, I'm not showing him my ID, but then you're just That's asking for trouble. You're just no, asking no, I, for trouble. I agree, I agree, but... And I do, but I do believe... Your rights, you know, are very important, and you know you should access. But I mean, be able, to, you should be able to travel unimpeded. That is the basically the way. That's the the way it's worded in the law books. Right, right. Either be it car, you know, whatever. You you are traveling. Okay, you're not operating the motor vehicle, which is a very corporate term. It, it, there's a lot of whatever uh, word spin, but right. You know, you're ju- you're literally just traveling. That could be by foot, by bicycle, motorcycle, car, whatever. And you have a right as a human being to be able to travel throughout your life unimpeded now a cop his job is every once in a while to impede the fuck out of you 
because either you were speeding and that area says you can't go, you can only go so fast. Right, and right. you broke the law by going too fast. It is his job and socially acceptable part of his job to pull you over and say, first of all, slow the fuck down. You could hurt somebody or yourself. Right. And second of all, now because of this, you're going to have to, you're going to face a penalty of either paying a fine or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? And I don't see that as extortion. A lot of people think tickets are extortion. No, I think when you can pull someone over and ask if they have any large sums of cash, and this has been documented where someone say just either uh, get a loan from their grandpa of a few thousand dollars because they had to pay their car or something, or someone got winnings from a casino. They get pulled over on the highway on the way back. And if they were flagged or not, that's debatable. But either way, they're pulled over, and they have the cash. Obviously, they cashed out. They've got the money. And part of the – and this has actually um, now been ruled un, un, unconstitutional. They can't do it anymore federally. Um, but, you know, it was part of civil search and seizure. So they would they would pull you over for some infraction and then ask if you had any – and this was like part of the protocol or part of the, the script was to ask them at some point if they had any large sums of cash in the car. And if they did, more, depending on what it was, if the take was only a couple hundred dollars, the cop wouldn't even bother because there's probably paperwork involved. But if we're talking thousands of dollars, which has happened, again, winnings and things like that, that $20,000 or whatever it was was taken from a guy. He had just got it from his father or a house loan or something like that, business loan. I don't know. The cop pulled him over. Took the money. Now that money, because it's part he of his twenty thousand dollars cash, took it out of his car. He didn't give it to him. He didn't want to give it to him. The no, no. Him. I just that's just right. I, I never hear about people having that much cash on them. Well, it does happen. Yeah. And because it happens enough, and you know, a lot of it, people say, well, because drug runners, you know, they're going to well, right, yeah, blah, yeah, blah blah blah, right. And so, again, that's but because it's under civil search and seizure, uh, that money goes to their department. Do you have any large? See, I've never heard that either, and I've never seen it on an episode of Cops either. Well, again, I've never the heard media, them. they're only going to Well, no, but I mean, cop, cop is hand. I mean, it is, but they can still edit. That's true. It's not live. But I've never, the, do you have any large sums of I mean, asking anybody that, like, no matter where they are, like that, I don't know, that seems a little far fetched to me. I'm going to see if I can get this. Um, it was the Arizona Highway Patrol, I believe. Huh. Arizona Highway Patrol. <laughs> But but this was a protocol. That's what you're saying. This was it was part of. Well, it might not be written in their rules of engagement to ask for this, but it's something they were doing because they knew oh, they could okay. get away. With. Well, that's that's a little that's a little more believable. <laughs> yeah, I, right. thought, I thought you were saying like they were told to do that. I was gonna like, and I mean money talks. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean that I and mean, that's been a, a huge contributor to corruption in the world. Seizure, seized assets means funds for Arizona law enforcement. That's a little different, though. I didn't realize that that's what you meant. I thought I thought you were saying that they were... Well, they no, were, but I mean, like, you have to imagine their morning coffee meetings with the department before they get sent yeah. out to the streets. They're like, all right, folks, you know, just checking out there, see if anyone's got any large sums of money. And, and it's not even, like, done sort of nefarious action. It's just done because, I mean, A, first of all, the funding in some departments is deplorable. So sometimes this money, you know, goes into a slush fund or whatever, but, you know, um, sometimes it actually helps them get new updated equipment, which they actually physically say Betty, better uh, body, body armor, which I have no problem with, a, with an officer of the law wearing body armor because, again, he knows what jo his job is, and you should take all the uh, ways you can to, to protect yourself from, uh, from physical harm and all that. Um, but, yeah, so I can't necessarily find it, but um, the cop, the patrolman kind of looks like Cesar Juan, which is why I <laughs> but he's just sitting there smiling with his with his canine unit, and he's got this big pile of cash. It's no. like it could be something even as exorbitant as sixty thousand. It's a large number of bills, and he's got them, and he just took them from the guy. And there's nothing the guy can do. And now, so the the the, the reason why the cops can do this is because the federal government gave them or sanctioned them the power to do so. But the agreement was that some of this would be given to the to the federal government as well. Mm. However, the way it was written, the stipulations, there are loopholes that say that some or all can be kept by the local department, hmm. some or all. So that means that I, and I guarantee you that nine times out of ten, that department is keeping all of yeah. that money. And, and then they're taking those large sums of money and they're buying things like things they don't need, like grenade launchers. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there is no police force that needs a fucking grenade launcher. When? Well, I mean, you never, uh, 
Never, when you've already got when you've already got armor piercing bullets and guns and automatics, and you've got armored vehicles where you can get real up close, and they can take up their registered from fifty cal, which they don't have. Mm-hmm. Um, at what point do you need to lob more than one grenade, an actual grenade, which seems right. unreasonable? Yeah. Flashbang is one thing, so maybe if it was just I, flash rounds. I guess that would be a very a, a very situational and very. I mean, again, if you were dealing with some type of militia. That say true, that true. say got a hold of armored vehicles. Yep. I mean, we're talking like the most extreme of extreme situations. Right. But you want to have the ability. You know, I don't. Um, I, I just don't. I don't see. Uh, I don't see a problem with it, really. I mean, should they should they have them in their cars? Like, probably not. But the, the maybe a special unit comes to show right, up with yeah. one grenade launcher, which is used for tear gas. Right. But I mean, if you you know, let's say just some crazy scenario, these guys either get a hold of or know somebody who is able to make them some type of bulletproof vehicle or armored vehicle that's very, very Resilient. armored, yeah, yeah. and their their rifles, they're not going to do anything. I don't I don't think the argument of you don't need is good enough because we don't we don't need we yeah. don't you well, know, know what we need, I guess. As it says Stephen Fry say said uh it's not necessary to have colored socks. You know, it's that well, that, that argument of oh you don't need that well, A, who cares? And B, you never know what you're going to need. You never – that's always my argument, the what if. And I know that it's a very no, no. easy way to, like, you know, what if, what if. But, I mean, it's still sort of a valid militia, militia groups are very real. And you might, you know, especially in the South and stuff, these are, like, militarized groups. Mm-hmm. And you don't – Most get, of them hate the government. <laughs> and, your, and your department decides not to get grenade launchers because you don't want to look – too militaristic, right. and then you look down the street and there's three fucking huge armored vehicles with mini guns on top, and you're throwing everything you got at it, tear gas and M16 rounds and all this stuff. But then isn't that an argument for that's when the National Guard get called in, and not when protesters... Okay, fair them? enough. Fair enough. Yeah, get the military involved. But then people are going to be like, look, they weren't doing anything. No, but that's... The armies here. Well, okay, but that's just PR. I mean, that's just politics. That's ego. Yeah. Who gives a fuck if the cops are the one to do it? It was taken care of. It was taken care of. That's what I'm that saying. Was necessary. It, you know what I mean? But I mean, they you, just want to be able to do it in house. They don't want to have to. I mean, and if you think, in essence, the police are in in a lesser way than they should be treated. They are the protectors of America, the military, or the military of the home base, if you want to call it that. That's the National Guard. That is quite literally the National Guard. Yeah, that is, that is their purpose, not the police. The police are there to make sure that John Q. Public can get away without being molested. And that might require stopping an armored right. vehicle with a grenade launcher. Absolutely. <laughs> In today's day and age, you're not fucking wrong. Absolutely correct. Um, um, I, I do know what you mean, though, because as you get more militaristic, you know, that's what Hitler did. He, he made the yeah. army super strong. He gave them then the Then they could just vehicles. come in, request right. the papers, and, you know, exactly. you have the Jews hiding so here. Well, I'm going to tear apart the law, your house. The law part, I think, should be observed more. Because everything that Germans did was legal. Right. It was all written in law. You will attack it. Was it was all legal. So that's what needs to be. These aren't, you know, it's um, policy, right? That's what that's what needs to be truly looked at is yes. policy, not what they have, not the weapons they have. But as soon as it becomes legal to, whatever, fire a grenade launcher into a small crowd of people riding, like five people, yeah, that's a little, yeah, you know, that'd be a bit horrible. That would be a bit overkill. Um, but as far as having them just in case, I don't, I don't see the problem with that at all. I really don't, um, because I agree. I agree. Again, my life isn't being invaded. You know, nothing well, is your life, to your me. life isn't, but a lot of people's are. A lot of people's rights and freedoms are being infringed upon. I guess. And it's either A, just because they're poor, or, or maybe it's B, because they're poor and a color, or maybe it's just C, that they're just a color. I mean, whatever the, whatever the reason is, it is happening. And maybe it's not happening in your neighborhood. And maybe it's not happening to you or yours, but it is happening. Yeah, And I yeah. feel like complacency, silence, is... Is uh is permission? That's that is true. Then that you know it's saying go right ahead. I see it, but I am not going to yeah. act upon it. And again, Ger- not going to talk about Germany's it. our go-to on the back burner. But I mean, yeah, that's the same. You're absolutely right. I agree. The people, the people turning their head away are almost just as guilty yeah. as the people committing. I, I do totally agree with that. And enough people turn their eye, and then it just becomes part of the narrative, and yeah, it just becomes acceptable. That's true. Yeah. I mean, so that's just the way. It I is. do think we do. We definitely need to be cautious of it. But it just, in my opinion, I don't. I don't. And it could be naivety, but I don't really feel like the police are headed in that direction. I don't. I think that I think that we're just hearing so many stories and seeing so many videos. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not seeing the other fifty thousand videos or 
stories of police just doing their job and not overstepping their boundaries. Right. You can't Absolutely. you can't just count the hits. No, I know, I know. And no, and and not to say that you should ignore when those bad things happen. Right, they should be addressed. Um, but you know, when do you hear a story about a firefighter doing something bad? I don't think I. Right, but the, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. The missed firefighter I've ever seen was that Dennis Leary show. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that, you, just as you said before, there's corrupt people in any field, but you wouldn't really get that much of a of a gain. Your political agenda right. wouldn't go very far if you were like, this firefighter like slammed this guy against the wall because, because he didn't because evacuate. He, right, because he didn't run away quick enough. Nobody's going to post that. Right. The police are easy to hate. Oh, yeah. It's it easy. It All the authority, the bad guys in blue or black or whatever they're wearing. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's uh, and it's been around forever. No, everybody. I can't say how many people I talk to. Yeah, I don't like cops. Yeah, I'm like, all right, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like congratulations. Yeah, it's like you know, I, I don't. Uh, but I, I do, I do get it. I totally get it. You know, like the uh, what's that? Mo- the most infamous video there is the um, uh, the, and the it was pretty bad. What the heck is his name? The uh, the black guy. This is an old, much older one. And he's like, Sir. Rodney King? Rodney King, yeah. 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 You know, that's like, whoa. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, that's sure, the quintessential, sure. you know. Police and, brutality. Yeah, and that racial. is. Yeah, and that is horrible, you know. And that's, well, that's what started the LA. Oh, and to answer your, this is going way back, but you said something earlier about why don't they just use the police baton. I, one, of the, one police officer I talked to, she was actually a female. She told me that that has become their last resort now, even after the gun, because the image it portrays. A police officer beating somebody with right. a piece of metal. It's like, it's not, it, it's almost like you don't even have a goal. You're but just what's the difference them. in the end? What's the difference between that and four or five cops pigpiling and kicking when a guy, you know, Well, if they're stuff. kicking, then yeah, I mean, why are they right. kicking? No, absolutely. The pigpiling is, you know, to make sure, right, right. you know, because I, even on my stomach, I could pull out my gun and, and do a little reach around, right. you know what I mean? Um, but that's why they've moved to the taser so much because you're not beating the shit out of them. Right. Now they use that more to break windows. That's okay. yeah, if somebody's like refusing to get out of the car and. Has a gun, or there's a baby in the car. Whatever, it could be any scenario. <clears throat> um, what was I going with that? I guess I just kind of well, they just don't use the baton. Because yeah, right, right. Thing. Yeah, just that whole image, you know, the big long nightstick and beating up some, you know, a, a black person. That's become such a no. It's true. It's true. And so that's that, the media's fault. Yeah, that's not happening. And that's what I'm saying. So people, people, these people have an agenda. They do. They want. They want you to hate the police. They they want you to, you know, and and you know. Maybe maybe they are going in a bad direction. Maybe I'm just naive, and and maybe the police are on their way to you know just beating up innocent people. You know, true jackboots on the street. Yeah, you know that it, it's possible. But do I do I really think that's happening? No, not at all. So I want to I want to present a question to you. Um, what do you feel about the idea? And this is just an idea that I'm sort of formulating, but you know maybe it's because I'm formulating. And perhaps someone else has. Um, how do you feel about the idea that maybe you know the way the media is going and the way they're portraying everything? is to a certain degree on purpose, and they are literally trying to incite, in a way, uh, passive-aggressively, whatever, by just reporting the facts, but, okay, um, in a way, inciting a race war or inciting this class war between yeah. police. So, I mean, do you feel like that, that could potentially be why this all starts to come to a head is because all they're ever showing us is all this negativity and, and spinning the story in such a way that cops are our protectors, but they're also, you can't trust them because they're going to try and beat the shit out of you if you do anything, you know, or, and then also that you can't trust the black man or whatever because, or innocent, in, right, inner right. city folks because of this, that, nothing. Um, that is the narrative that they want us to have. They want us to feel divided. They want us to walk down the street and cross the street when we see a black man. <laughs> right, yeah. Because I, we don't trust them. Yeah, I, def, I definitely, um, that And they want us to resist the cops because we don't trust them either. Right, yeah. And I, I mean, mean, that is literally, they're just playing both well, puppets. I think you got to be careful with the term they because there are, well, there are a lot of different news stations. I know, I know. You know, Fox has a different agenda than NBC, for sure, say. For sure. But the point is they're both trying to promote their own agenda. Absolutely. You know what and I mean? And it's not the, the truth. The, the, other, the other side is just as bad. The, the super the super liberal side who is like, you know, you can't say black. You have to say African American. Like Even that's – they say that's offensive. Yeah, yeah. It's, Which it's I like, believe would be offensive, honestly. It's such, it's such – you know, American. You don't – nobody's called me a European American. Right, right. You know, I mean, it's just such – Bullshit, but the other side is just as bad with yeah. the, you know, with, uh, you know, I mean, it does still exist. The, you know, the true, ra- you know, I mean, true, true racism. Yes. You know what I mean? Does still exist. Yep. Uh, but that's, that's why I don't watch TV, man. You know, all this shit, just somebody's just trying to get you to think the way they do. That's what they want. It's all just like you said, all the negativity, 
All the bullshit. Oh, look at this one. Oh, we got another one. And it's always some fucking blurry video. And, oh, in the titles, you know, police shoot unarmed, homeless, crippled, blind, black man with AIDS in the head. Like, something like, like, you're going to go into that. And kicks his dog. You, yeah, you're going to go into that being angry. It's very true. You're going to read it, and right off the bat, you're like, oh, fuck these guys. Yeah. And that was the title of one of the videos I watched. This was a few months ago now. It was in, um, I think, I think it was the um, LAPD. I think it was Los Angeles in California. And uh, the title of it was "Police Shoot Homeless Man for No Police Shoot Unarmed Homeless Man for No Reason." So right off the bat, why did they have to tell you that he was homeless? Right. Well, it's 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 a spin. You know, it, that's they they're already putting that image. And the, the, at first, the the videos from far away, it's a kind of a shaky, blurry video. And at first. It looks as if the cops just, I don't know, they're like, there's like four or five police trying to uh, put the cuffs on a guy, but he's like still on his back on the ground. And it, and it looks as if, at, on the first watch, that out of nowhere they just back up and you hear, boom, 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 boom. They shoot him like six times. Like a few of them back up, draw their pistols. And I was like, holy shit. So I went back and watched it a few more times and watching it closer and pausing and listening very closely to the audio, you see him grab the gun, one of the officer's guns, as they're reaching down. I see. And you hear one of the police say, gun. And then they back up and shoot him. If you grab a cop's gun, no, of course. you're going to get shot. I don't disagree with that. And the reason I'm bringing that up is I fell for it. I went into that video mm -hmm. seeing homeless black man. Right. Like, oh, come and on. In general, you're a police supporter. Right. So, But I, it worked. The first, I only want, If I had only watched it once... I would have told that story differently because it's very grainy and there's ah, ah, ah people mm -hmm. screaming mm -hmm. and all you see is bang, bang, bang. Yep. The first watch, it just looks like he's laying there and it literally looks like they just go fuck it and shoot him, yep. but they don't. Right. You see him grab it and you hear a cop say gun. Yep. And that's all they need. And I agree with that. I don't disagree with that at all. Um, but there are plenty of actions that I do disagree with. Absolutely. And I think that's why this discussion is even happening. Um, which I like. And I, I, have, I have one more question for you. And I'm not going to say one more, but I do have another question for you. Um, do you think there would ever be a, a case, and maybe not just one isolated case or specific incident, but maybe uh, perhaps a collection over the next few years of, of situations that, you know, again, you look at, you look at multiple sources for information because, again, you got these misleading titles and stuff. Well, don't just look at that one. Find an article about the exact same situation right, from a different yeah. point of view because you might get an article writer who is pro-cop or pro police and says that this is they were justified, and then you might also read the same situation from the other angle that says that he was a poor defenseless homeless man, and these jackboots are just kicking the shit out of him and shooting him for no reason. So you've got these two extreme. Well, take them both into consideration, and then fuse the stories together. And this is not picking and choosing the the, the you know your ideals. This is taking it's like a myth, you know. I mean, it, it all thousands of stories about this one mythological event happened. Well, it's because there's some grain of truth to that. Right, right. There is some grain of truth and there's some grain of fantasy. Well, it's the same thing here. Um, you know, you've got a few different people have two different stories. Take all of them together and you will find a thread that travels through all of them. And even then, you might not still have the same picture or the full picture. You might not know exactly what happened, but you have a much better understanding taking as many points of view. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, which I think you would agree most people are too lazy or, or too sheltered. Even, even, even myself, uh, 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 I've been a, a victim of that, just the laziness of, of, <coughs> of um, you know, not wanting to do the research. And um, and I guess at the end, I don't want to say that I don't really care, but it's not that important to me because somebody's presenting the story for a reason. And um, now it's like you can't even trust the news. And it's like, why, why even bother? You know, it's like unless you witness something firsthand. Um, I, I do believe there are a handful of people in my life, yourself included, who um, – you know, their testimony would always be enough for me if they actually witnessed something. I see. Um, as far as you know, having right. you know, knowing really honest people, and you know, where I would believe them if they witnessed someone wouldn't go out, someone who wouldn't go out of the way to, yeah, or, or just doesn't lie much in general. You know, I mean, everybody does little white lies, but I mean, um, but as far as like anything that has to do with the, the media or the internet, uh, a video that was posted by somebody who can edit, who can okay. immediately throw their opinion at you, mm -hmm. I just I don't take it that. You know, unless it's like, you know, the Baltimore riots, they're obviously going on. <laughs> it's, it's, no one's exactly you know what I mean? the riots, right. The riots are going on. They're happening. There's way too many videos at once, blah, 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 blah. But as far as, like, the specific little things that are happening within that, mm -hmm. we don't know. No, we're not getting the whole story, absolutely. And that's the whole narrative, really, of, of people 
on my end of things who were taking in these stories um, and, and, and in a sense, in a gross sense, regurgitating them back as <laughs> friends and friends, uh, friends and family, uh, you know, we're, we're just, we're seeing this information and some of us are being responsible. I'm trying to be the type who's being responsible by going to multiple sources and getting as much information as I can and then presenting some sort of opinion or feeling on it. Um, but I think a lot of people just parrot, you know, they look at, they look at an article by its title on Facebook and they say, oh, they get the gist of it. They don't have to read it. They just forward it and send it and share it and give off their two cents. And that's, that's kind of dangerous. Um, but it's also impossible to tell unless you can just tell they're just making shit up. It's impossible to tell if they've done the research or not. So right, right, yeah. you, you, you listen to the people you listen to. Uh, but going back to what I was saying, is, do you feel, and, and I'm only bringing this up, uh, and I mean, this is not my intention at all, but, um, because you, you, your dream is to be in law enforcement, this has always been a passion of yours, something that's very, inter- very interesting to you and something that you would like to pursue. Um, is there, do, though, are you, is there a possibility that you could ever see enough information where you would be dis- totally dissuaded from that? Absolutely, yeah. You yeah. would say maybe the, maybe the institution isn't corrupt, but there's yeah. too much corruption for yeah. me to actually tolerate. The, th- the, thing that, the thing that would work, well, I guess a few police have said to me, it's different now. And I and absolutely that, believe that. That was a little, that was a little disheartening. Um, you know, but then, but then in the same breath, um, <laughs> this particular cop, I was, I was talking to shit faced while at the gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't resist going up to him. You can't write a better movie. Dude, right. It, it was like 30 minutes before, uh, last call. And I'm like all staggering, like, you know, the mute. The, and there's this cop just sitting there against the wall, like, like looking at his phone. And I'm like, I'm going to go, talk to him, you know, so I went over and like, I want to be a cop, like, just hey, the officer. worst, sir. right, but he was very happy to talk to me, Yeah, he's probably bored, probably, and nice to see someone dream like a human, right, and, uh, you know, and he, um, but that's what he said, he was like, it's different now, he's like, he's like, but he's like, the advice I give to you, he's like, if you get the job, he's like, just always assume somebody's videotaping you, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then you won't do anything, you know, well, that's well, not true, <laughs> no, yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, yeah and, and in fact, we were, um, it was funny that he, you know, just, I like, you know, I have, I have a fair amount of quotes from actual police that I've, cause I always make it a point to talk to them. Maybe it's weird. Maybe it's childish. But it's just your interest. Though. Yeah. And, uh, but we were outside. Everybody like gets kicked out like 15 minutes early and they're like, all right, you know, go home. And this guy sped by in his car and he said, 15 years ago, I would have thrown my flashlight through his windshield, you know, but it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that times have changed, you know? Yeah, so yeah. to answer your question, um, it would take quite a bit. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely anything's possible. I, and everybody has, uh, I don't want to say breaking point, but a point when they would be dissuaded. And, um, yeah, it, it definitely is possible, but I, it would take quite a bit because, um, I'm confident that I could do the job properly. Yep. And honestly, and, uh, and I don't disagree. I think of, of anybody that I would say would be a good example or a good, um, advocate, advocate or, well, or just, um, a good example of a good cop, or potentially a good cop, which I believe their majority are. They they were there to do the right thing right. from the beginning. Um, I feel like you'd be an absolute prime example of that. You know, you, you like the authority, you like the idea of being able, but you you like the authority because you like the idea of being able to help people. Right. Which yeah. is why I think I I think I, is why I met you in EMT class. Right. It's because <laughs> you want to be there, you'd like to be a part of the action, you yeah. like to have a little bit of authority, which I absolutely understand. But you also want to actually genuinely do something right. good with yeah. your time. And, and it's a fulfilling job. You're you're yeah. you're seeing people at their best and at their worst. At their worst. And yeah. you're at a very interesting. I like I do like power, but I like the responsibility of power. Again, going back to carrying a firearm every day is immense responsibility. Yep. Um. I'm not smirking like, hey, I could shoot you at any set. Like, it's not like it, it. I like the idea of that responsibility, and I think I think it's that kind of and an unpredictable job. I definitely um, and I'm into self defense, and I'm into right. keeping yourself fit. Yep. <laughs> which I've fallen out of. At Thank this God, point. this is audio only. <laughs> <laughs> we would have needed a widescreen. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it's something that I just it just clicks. It, it yeah. feels right. It's just something that, uh, but. It resonates with me. Yeah, it does. It feels very familiar, which doesn't make any sense. But ever since I was little, just the police, 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 that's all I ever wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but there, there could be, there, there is a breaking point. Whatever, there, they, if it got like to the point where they were like constantly getting fired, and I mean, yeah, I might, I might go for something else. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. No, I, know. I really, I, I really, I don't ever I, want to see get to that point. 
I, I, I hope I hope to have a good to be able to have a good career and you know help some people, save some people maybe even, and have some cool stories, learn some cool skills like like self defense skills and being able to drive a car really well. How do how do we respond to emergency situations? Yeah, you know, because I've only been in a few semi emergency situations and I've always been very calm. Yep. My heart races in situations like stupid ones, like after I eat a big meal and I feel like <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> right. Then I get nervous, but I don't I don't get nervous if like a building's on fire or if, yeah. Or if somebody's passed out on the ground, it's just you that. kind of just sort of separate yourself. You can mm-hmm. see from above. I I get the exact. Same I thing. snap right into it. So I mean that you know that made me realize like I could do it. And and I'm I'm you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm objective and I'm on the defensive and I'm you know I'm, I'm cautious and um. But anyway, I I, I just want to I guess we're, we're gonna end pretty soon here. We're getting past the hour mark, um, or two hours actually. I just want <laughs> I just want to say uh, that I feel like your presentation there with you know. You're open to the possibility, but really, in the end, you just want to do something good. I think that absolutely represents the majority of our police force. I feel like I feel like anyone who is out there um, just saying, you know, fuck the police, you know, kill pigs, uh, or or that one asshole who's like, I'm gonna make pigs fly, you know, <laughs> fucking, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> fucking, you just you are just a part of the problem, sir. You don't get it, um, nor do the people get it who are you know trying to say that Eddie Gray's rap sheet was any reason to have him. Anything more than just the taint. Right, right. You know what I mean? Whatever. Even if he resisted, maybe he gets a black eye. That's 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 part of doing business if that's your business. But to be uh, to the to the level he was, I you know whatever. We both agree that, that was just too much. Um, but I feel like you totally encompassed um, the general consensus of most police officers. They just want to do the right thing. Yeah, I mean, I would hope so. And the you system, know? the current society that we live in, the current system and the current policies make it so that them doing the right thing equals doing whatever they have to do to take care of themselves and their partners. And I, you can't, as a human being, you can understand that. Right. You can't fault them for it. Right, yeah. So, anyway, really good talk. Yeah. I really want to Absolutely. thank you for that. No problem. I man. appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> that was great. As always. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, well, I guess we'll cut it there, and maybe we'll have another, <laughs> another discussion. See you next time. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and um, leave any kind of uh, comments, critiques, opinions, um, whatever you want in the comments. Uh, Yeah. Okay. See you later.